Hey everyone, welcome to Quartz and Tent Pegs. My name is Aubrey. If this is your first time on my channel and you like it, be sure to subscribe. Um, at the end of this video, if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put them down in the comment section and I will do my best to get back with you. With this Biblical Wife series that I've been doing, um, I did, you can see there's a little pause between this video and the last video. And the reason for that is there's been a few things that have gone on. Um, one, my sister, brother-in-law, and their three girls are down in Texas um, for the holidays, for Christmas and New Year's. And uh, I'm really excited. They are uh, doing missions in Bucharest, Romania. I just kind of paused for a little while just because there was so much going on and so much to do that I didn't really have the time to concentrate on a video. Second, I just recently found out that I am pregnant again. So on to baby number four. And, uh, yeah, so I haven't exactly been my best. I haven't been 100%. I feel like I can sleep at any moment I'm sitting down, including right now. But I wanted to do this video before I continue with the series, mainly to, mainly to speak about some things that I think is very important I feel is very important uh, to cover before I start in the New Testament. One being this. After doing my Proverbs Biblical Wife video, uh, I didn't, I realized that I didn't mention that the actions of the Proverbs 31 wife uh, wasn't what made her a good wife. And I want to emphasize that. What made her a good wife was um, was her characteristics, and I wanted to emphasize that. And some of the reason why I brought out some of the other scriptures in Proverbs was it was the characteristics of the biblical godly wife that made her a good wife. I also wanted to emphasize the fact that um, that home it shows her 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 view, her convictions of being um, a God-fearing woman um, by the way that she had no worries, her husband had no worries, her children had no worries. They went through life knowing that everything was going to be taken care of and, and they continued to they continued to grow in their abilities and the assets that they had and they used those in, in um, continuing on bringing, bringing finances in, but that wasn't their whole way of life. It was their character and being a godly man and a godly woman that made that marriage a good marriage. And because it was such a good marriage in that aspect, they were both able to do things that uh, actually made a stamp on the community of who they were and um, that's the important thing I wanted to bring out about the Proverbs 31 woman. A submissive wife is, and a biblical wife is not a good wife because she's a good cook and she makes sure that supper's on the table every day at five. It's not because she gets up in the morning with her husband at four, makes him a huge breakfast before he goes to work. Um, a good submissive wife um, is not because she keeps the house spotless. That's, that's not the idea of a submissive wife. The submissive wife isn't one who, you know, um, when her husband, I'm just going to get, when her husband wants sex, it's go time. Being a submissive wife doesn't mean that you checked out your emotions, you checked out your your brain at the door when you know he walked you down the aisle or, or he uh, put you over the threshold. You know, it has nothing to do with that. You're not brainless because you're a submissive, godly wife. Um, you are one, you're his help. 
um, you're there with him, supporting him, praying for him, um, being that extra um, person that hears Holy Spirit, and, and you're seeing it in a different way, and that's so important. Um, you are bringing trust into the marriage, and you're saying, I trust you to make the decisions that, as a woman, you, women, you know, there are some decisions that we just don't want to make. We would rather not make. And even though we have this feeling of wanting to take over and just doing, we actually don't want to. And that's where it comes in that that godly man, um, that godly husband steps in and he makes a decision because he's looking at it in a different way. And he can make that concrete, he can make that important decision that we would probably kind of, you know, um, compromise on. But he's like, no, I know what God said. I know what the word of God said and we're doing this. And he will stick to it. And if he has a wife who's saying, you know, I trust you. And, 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 and I know I would have made that decision. It would have been bogus. So, you know what? I trust you. And I trust you to make those hard decisions. I trust you to stand on it. And I trust you to say, no, we're going to focus on this way where we would focus on the emotions. He's like, no, I, I see the game plan and, and I see the vision and I see the end result and I'm sticking to this. You know, come with me, support me. We're st I'm sticking to this. I can see, I can see the end over there. And, and we have to say, you know what, I trust you that you see the end right over there and I'm running with you. And, um, and that's what, that's what's so important about a submissive wife is telling that man, I trust you. I trust you. I, I, I don't believe that you're going to cause us to fail or make us fail or cause us to go this way or that way. I trust that you are taking us down the narrow road. You're you're showing us the way. You're leading us to Christ. You're you're the pastor of this family and you're leading us to Jesus. And and I completely trust you that every step of the way it's going to continue being forward and it's going to be successful and it's going to be prosperous and it's going to be good and no matter what it looks like we're going to continue and it's going to look good at the end i would be willing to share some of my experiences where you know other people around us might say oh i don't know if that was the lord i know it was the lord and i i know what the word was and i supported him and i trusted him and and my place was simply making making a home wherever we were you know home is wherever we are for however long we are and 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 making it work and i'm stay at home wife being there at home you know praying and continuing to let holy spirit just move in our family move in our home teaching our children and when the husband comes home he just steps right in and and every piece of stress comes off and and i like to bring that to him i like when he comes home to give him a freedom of i'm not pressuring you in any way you just come home and enjoy yourself and um and enjoy this this home that we've we've built together unified and um and so i just wanted to bring that up was the important characteristic of that family and that godly wife was she had no worries she knew God would provide. She knew things would be taken care of. She she laughed at any adversity. It's not what she does around the house. You know, some of us, you know, we stink at keeping house. There's just some of us that we stink at cooking. Uh, you know, um, especially when, you know, especially when we're pregnant and we've got all their little kids walking around. It, we're barely making it sometimes because we're hugging the toilet most of the, most of the day. So just know that you don't have to kill yourself by making sure the house is spotless. You know, uh, putting yourself in a nervous breakdown because that's not what it looks like to be a biblical wife. It's, it's the atmosphere of your home. Are your children happy? Are your children um, at peace? Uh, do they know the word of God? Um, do they do they show affection to one another? Do they show affection to their parents? Do they understand the importance of hearing the word of God? Um, your husband is does he love coming home and being with you and your children and and 
being away from you and your children is like, uh, he can barely stand it throughout the day. You know, because home has been, it. there's this atmosphere of peace in the home, this atmosphere of joy in the home, this atmosphere of Holy Spirit in the home, and, and stress just comes off of him. There's freedom. There's not that pressure of do, 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 do. It's, I'm here and I'm going to enjoy myself and everything else is checked out at the door. And so that's something that I want to bring up about what a biblical wife is and a godly wife is. Her husband had no cares. Her husband had no worries. He had peace. She had no cares. She had no worries. She was at peace. Her children were happy, had no worries. They were at peace. And that's something that I want to point out to you about the Proverbs 31 woman. Next, we'll go into the New Testament. We'll discuss some things that Paul writes about, that Peter writes about, and um, we're also going to cover a little bit of the misconceptions of what some of the things say. And we'll talk about a few other things that I feel is very important uh, to bring freedom um, and, and to lose a religious mindset when it comes to being a biblical wife. So you guys be blessed. Have a wonderful New Year's. And God bless.